I don't talk about this much um, because it speaks to a great weakness. But I guess it's a weakness everybody has, and so it's worth talking about, and it's interesting. Um, I've been niggerized, and I was just crying because I can't see my baby. And I can't see my baby because of niggerphobia. So I come from a really strange place. If you'll allow me a uh, voice, please listen to the video. Don't get upset. Don't flag it. Don't try and change me or, or get up, start your gossip talk, you know? Really listen. I mean, my behavior during my daughter's youth was, let's call it radical. It, I was an extremist. What kind of extremist? A cultist. I believed in negaritarianism, even though nobody else believed in it. I had some friends, but there weren't enough that it was a real thing. And so I ended up just beating my head against a wall and talking to strangers about the N-word and accepting the failure of those conversations and just, and just throwing my life away, right? And so my baby's daughter, uh, my baby's mother, God, I miss her, uh, her daughter, not particularly her. She was abusive and she was negrophobic. She did not want, one time I was changing Mary's diaper and I said, you're a very sweary Mary Berry because she's adorable, smiling while I clean up her poop. As an adult, I once had to have a mild amount of my parent cleaning up my poop because of my disability. And uh, it, I was not smiling. I was not smiling. She was able to smile through it because she was just my daughter. And she loved the attention. And so what is it that negarized me? So one of the things that has happened is that we've gotten societies that are too large. I mean, uh, organizations, things that are too large that they are unresponsive to the individual. Um, the reason that I don't vote is because my vote will never matter because I am not a 100,000 people. And I am voting in a pool of 360 million. So I have to, what, win the lottery? to get cocaine legalized, that's never gonna happen. My vote will never be the final vote for that candidate that's out there saying cocaine should be legalized in sex work and organ sales. That it's just not how politics works. I'll never, I'll never be able to achieve anything in a pool that big. Everybody is small fry in those pools. Um, Everyone is, I mean, the, the only, and, and so we get swamp monsters and it's because we are trying to, to live in the ocean and we're not meant to live in the ocean. Water, water everywhere, nowhere to drink. Holy crap, I did not push the reverse button. That was a weird visual thing that happened, who cares? Who cares about anything, guys? I don't. I don't care about anything except my baby and my uh, rights. And that should be okay with everybody. It should be okay for everyone to care about their family and their rights and still have a good, healthy, respectful society. But it's not enough. You have to care emotionally about money and about survival and about basic rights, not advanced rights, like the a right to discard your privacy. You don't have the right to discard your privacy because nobody will allow you to film them while they counsel you or give you some kind of uh, therapy. Doctors will let you film more often than a uh, psychologist. Doesn't that look insane? Doesn't psychology look stupid given that? 
And that's what I majored in psychology. I see nothing on the psychological field to croon about. Croon isn't even a thing that you can do. That's how little psychology has to uh, say for itself. The only thing I like is neuroscience and the idea of exploring neural pathways. And most of that research is done with rats and mice. And so, and so psychology is so far from where it needs to be, but human contact is so healing that psychology ends up being a placebo, a career, a career built on a placebo. Because a good psychologist and a bad one, if they're willing to listen to you whine, both serve a good purpose together. But none of them will let you film them. They just won't. You don't have the right to discard your privacy. You are private and you better stay private. Never poop in public. And so sometimes you just have to poop in public and people don't accept that. But that's what you realize when you're niggerized is you realize that morally you're nothing because you've been steamrolled so many times so that you can respect a murderer and just say, I would do that in the wrong circumstance. If I got stuck in the wrong way and things were going wrong over and over and it became like soul destroying, I would be willing to murder somebody to get out of that or to protect people and things I care about. I'd be willing to assault somebody is the first step, I suppose. But because I'm so anti-violence, I don't, I just jump straight to murder because <laughs> I, I love, I love murder culture, and that's actually a failing of mine, probably. But I love video games with murder, I love movies with murder, I love TV shows. When I think about myself, all I think about is murder. Um, okay. What's my point? Oh, niggerization splits up the family. And one way it does that is that these giant entities like Facebook or Google or the United States of America then interact with you as if you matter, but you don't. And so that interaction is one-sided and is knuckled down. And so you get the brunt of the burden. And so if you're, if you're small, don't take any risks and play by the rules or they will destroy you. But that's my thing, is that I try and play by the rules and play another game that has other rules at the same time. And when they conflict, I sometimes switch goals. For God's sake, sometimes I violate community guidelines. I'm so sorry. Can I still have my YouTube channels back, please? You know? But, but so, and then lastly, standards. Because of American history, for me at least, and I think for most people, the term niggerization becomes extreme, where like you have to actually be lynched to be considered niggerized. But because I use the N-word so much, that word has been for lack of a better term, niggered into a more polite space where I can recognize somebody's niggerization before it gets to that level of lynching. And I, I realize that it is a continuum of spectrum, a slope. And that slippery slope really does have spikes down there. And it really does always get worse. There's always a way for things to get worse. And so... I think that my niggerization is legitimate because it has broken up my family. It has destroyed my reputation and my property. It has made me physically weak and has interacted with my multiple sclerosis to even cause me paralysis at times and loss of control of bladder. So that's a little bit TMI. So I'm going to shut this off at 10 minutes. Thanks for watching.